Good evening, Facebook. I have a very special thing to show you guys tonight. Um, I'm super excited and I'm also very sad. Uh, before I get super excited, let me just tell you how sad I am about the mascara tease that I gave y'all earlier. Um, so we changed our packaging on our mascara, which is awesome because now it's super sleek and sexy. But the first shipment that came in was just slightly over, just tiniest little issue. So I told you guys it was available. It sold out in record time and now it's not available. And for all of those of you who got so excited about it, I'm sorry. But now that I know y'all have some extra cash because I just refunded it to you, I'm going to show you what you should do with your money. <laughs> so here we go. We are going to talk about vanity setup, what you need to be happy doing your makeup, what you need to take your makeup to the next level, and what you need to keep all of your makeup in to keep this area nice and clean. So here's one of the things that I teach people when I do makeup classes. You would never write a letter with your arm up like this, okay? You would never hold a pencil and hold your elbow up in the air. And yet, we tend to lean over the bathroom counter and slap at our face like this with very little control over the mascara wand, the lipstick tube, the makeup brush, the applicator, even the sponge, whatever it is that you're using. So one of the things that I have to teach people when they're learning to use our products because they do take some getting used to and really a whole different set of muscle memory in order to do it well um, is that you have to brace yourself. So, you have to find a vanity. It can be your dining room table. It can be anything that preferably has a drawer space, but if you don't have that space available, I've even seen people just hang one of those little floating shelves on the wall, put a cheap mirror on the wall behind it, hang up some Christmas lights around them, those little twinkly Christmas lights or those super cool bulb vintage Edison lights. Get creative, but make sure light is coming at your face. Make sure that you can be within eight inches of your mirror and make sure that you have a little bit of storage, whether that's a little box. Oh, a little box. <laughs> well, now that you bring it up, let me just show you a little box. Are you ready for this? Can you handle this? What? This little beauty is, well, let's see, what is this? One, two, three, four, five. It's five or six inches long. It's about an inch and a half thick and also about five inches wide. It's almost a square. Magnetic closure right here. All right. When you open this up, are you ready? Are you ready? Should I keep delaying? Because that's what good salespeople do, right? <laughs> I'm not going to do that to you. Here it is. Oh, Limelight by Alcone. Um, okay, so let me see if I can show this to you. I'm going to move the comments aside, so forgive me. Hi, Marty. I just saw you pop on. The little fingerprint there. Um, okay, so here's what I've done with my little black box. I have four lip colors, one mascara, a lip liner, and five of my favorite shadows on the top layer. I'm going to lift the top layer out, set it aside, and by the way, that top layer uh, is magnetic. So I can hold this up straight without losing everything and show you that I have my whole face palette on here and the two eyeshadows that I always use even if I'm not doing full eyeshadow. One of them is the one that I use on my brows. Ooh, look, double, double trouble. It's kind of freaking me out. Um, I have been using, if you saw my video earlier today, you know that I have been using a quad of concealers as my foundation, concealer, highlight, contour. I'm really loving this. Um, I have my setting powder that's almost gone. 
bronzer that's almost gone, and number four blush. This is the number six blush that's the highlighter, the glowy kind of blush. This is the um, crystal color out of the Lottie Dream On palette, and this is number 40 from our eyeshadows that I use on my brows. The concealers, zero, two, five, and six. These will work on every face. Okay, so my makeup game just got a lot cleaner. I wish that I could pick the phone up and show you, but the light just blinds you and you'll never be able to see it, but I'll take a picture later. I wish I could show you how sleek and awesome it looks. Um, in the picture that I posted about this live, um, I put kind of all of the products that I use on a regular basis in my little black box. Bam, okay. And I set it in my little tray and I have then just have my cup of brushes and then I have my two sprays. And then I have my super sleek mirror. It is a game changer, y'all. It's, it's kind of like when you want to be creative and you want to craft something, but your house is a complete disaster and you can't even find a single flat space that doesn't have crap all over it. And it just totally sucks out your creativity lights. Oh, I have all the lights off so the stupid moths because we have dogs and horses and there's doors are always open. I live in a barn. Um, anyway, because of that, I, yeah, I lost my train of thought. I live in a barn. Okay. Hi, Angie. Hi, Tina. Hi, Kristen. All right. So I'm going to get started. Um, hi, Sydney. Cousins in the house. Christy. Critty, critty. All right, so I'm going to start with my primer, which is going to be all the moisturizer that I'm going to need. And it may not be all the moisturizer that you need. If you're super dry, you may want additional moisturizer, but you want to let it sit for about five minutes before you do foundation, concealer, whatever we're calling it. Okay, so getting up my little black box. I have my towel sitting right here, my mirror my black box, my two sprays, and my cup of brushes. Oh, and let's not forget the wine. Because you can't be creative without it. That's not true, you can. But you're just creative in a really boring way. So, pretty sure none of the masters ever created anything really amazing without being on some kind of drugs or alcohol. Except God, he created some cool stuff without it. All right, opening her up. I'm gonna take out my top tray and set it over here. All right, so brush number five is in stock, you guys. It is in stock. It was out of stock for so long, but it is in stock. And so is the tapered powder brush. These are probably my two favorites. Right? Oh, you know what? All of my favorites are in stock, except for number 11. I think that one is still out of stock right now. But my Dome Blender, great eyeshadow brush, extremely versatile, and our Brow Tamer are all in stock. These are my favorites right here. 28, 36, not really sure, 18 maybe, maybe less, and this one's 14. All right, so I'm going to put those on my towel so that I don't have to um, try to look around in my um, jar for the right brush because the light is blinding me and I can't really see past it. So I'm going to go into, I'm so excited to be able to show you all this. I did this earlier, but I'm going to do it again because I know some of y'all for some reason will not watch replays. It's like if it's not live, it's just not going to happen. So I'm going to keep doing it. All right. We're gonna go in and bounce around into zero, two, and five, all right? Even if you're pretty pale, but you have the littlest bit of tan, you still need this number five, even if it looks too dark, to warm up these two colors. Okay, so we're gonna pat around in there. The concealers are have even more pigment than our foundations, if you can believe that, and they also last longer the trade-off is that they take a little bit more time to buff in because they're a little bit more firmly pressed. So they require um, a little bit of warm-up time to kind of soak in. 
when the weather's nice and warm, you probably won't have that problem. And it's plenty nice and warm here, but I've got the air conditioner on high and blasting, so. And if you're ever wondering, you know, I've got so many colors on my face. I've got pink, I've got brown, I've got pale pasty white, I've got purple, I've got dark brown, light brown. I've got so many colors, which one am I supposed to match, right? I mean, am I a zebra with black stripes? And am I a white zebra with black stripes or a black zebra with white stripes? Who knows? But there is an answer to how to match your face. You lean toward the yellower tones because yellow says tan and healthy. Now you still want it to jive with the rest of your body. So if you're super porcelain, you may wanna stay just barely warm, but warm is always gonna be friendlier and healthier looking than anything else. I never, I, some makeup artists do, but I never match a collarbone. I never, I never try to match anything. I just pull back, look at, kind of look into my own eyes, look at my at myself the way that another person would see me. And if my face doesn't stand out as being grossly different than the rest, then it's good. Because quite frankly, it's always different than the rest. Your face is just not the same kind of skin and coloring. It sees the sun before the rest of you does, unless we're talking about my ass, in which case that probably gets there first. All right. Okay, a couple of little blemishes now, and so I'm gonna go in with my finger and spot treat, kind of press that in a little bit. And a roller on. There's a really pesky one right there. Let's see if we can get the color just right. All right. So this does take just a tad longer, but it's also going to last longer and give you more coverage. This is a great option for people with um, rosacea. Um, with heavy acne, anything going on with your skin that requires a pretty firm layer of coverage. Now I'm going to dip into the concealer number zero and go about what we usually do here. Most of you have popped in before. Let's see, I've got some comments. Hi, Trinka. How's everybody doing? Hi, Erica. Were you as sad about the mascara as I was? Well, my life was about to get so much better. All right, so this needs to be several shades lighter than the rest of your face. Resist the urge to make it go away. Now I'm using it as eye primer, okay? Roll it around in here. Make sure you pay attention to the fact that your eyeballs do this. They wrap around. So you gotta treat the inside just as much as this easy to reach part and then also the outside too. And then I'm going to use this as a highlighter. Highlight the bridge of my nose, my brow bone, right above my lip. The Cupid's bow and right on my chin and a little on the forehead. All right, now we're just going to make sure it's a pat and pull motion. Pat and pull. You want to stretch out any fine lines and make sure you get in there. Don't go for perfection, just go for, yep, nothing stands out as being grossly out of place, so let's move on. So, now I'm gonna use my tapered brush. Look how fast this is going. I mean, that was a little time consuming, but. Okay, powder. Because we are out of our setting powder right now, you can very easily just use baby powder. It is not ideal, but it'll get you through until I can get you some setting powder. 
anywhere that you tend to sweat, you might want a little extra dose. Okay, that brush is going back and I'm gonna use, oh man, I forgot to do my, ooh, you know what, we're gonna get dangerous here. I forgot to use the number six as the contour. So going over the setting powder can be dangerous, but I use so very little of it that I'm hoping I can get still get a good effect. I should have done this before I set. Yeah, no problem. I didn't really put much of that setting powder anywhere else. And we're just making circles. Let me just slow, slow that motion down. That's what we're doing. It will take you some practice to get used to doing that. All right, little massage. If you get too much, just take a dry finger, kind of wipe them off. There we go. Now we're contoured. Now we can put that brush away. And I am going to put on a little bit of blush. Cheesy grin right on the apples. All right, now we're ready for brows. Brow Tamer is out and available. I'm gonna spray it with some setting spray. Dip, dip, and here we go. Did I tell y'all that I figured out why one eyebrow is a unicorn and one is a donkey? It is because we're doing this one with this hand. You can't, that's why I make you guys do the concealer. Yes, Melissa, number six for con uh, contour. Um, it works on everyone. I promise you're going to freak out when you put it on there. Just keep blending. As long as you're using the rest of our face products. I wouldn't try to put this over whatever uh, other foundation you might have. Anyway, I tell you to use do concealer with this one because this one you'll never get the right motion and the right pressure. Same thing with the eyebrow. So I'm forcing myself to learn to use my left hand to do my eyebrow. Oh, still over here. All right, we go fill them in. Hi, Christy, how are you doing? I don't think you have any limelight yet, do you? Now is a very good time to start. Trust me, ask some of these girls. You don't wanna wait. Stuff flies off the shelves and gets back ordered like in 42 minutes. That's how fast that mascara sold out today. All right. Oh, left hand. See, it's going to take, it takes practice, y'all. I'm going to hold on to my elbow. I'm almost moving my face <laughs> instead of the brush. It seems to be even easier. Hi, Michelle. Thank you, love. I told Michelle to please, please come on here and give me her extra, see, she knows how to make my heart happy. <laughs> Thanks, Michelle. She gives me all the thumbs up and hearts. Okay, it is scary, but this is what's gonna happen to you when you get this makeup in the mail. And the smiley faces, I get smiley faces too. When you get this in the mail and you sit down and I tell you to make circles and you just go, eh, forget it. I'm just going to do what I normally do and go back and forth. And then you're going to call me and say, it just doesn't look the same. And I'm going to say, well, maybe that's because you're not using the right body mechanics. It's almost always body mechanics that prevents people from doing it the best way possible. All right, now I gotta blend that out a little bit because I can still see that sharp line. Spoolie works really well for taking care of that. Brush those hairs up, brush these guys up. And 
and now I just need to go back and fill in a little bit of what I just took off. I have a little mole kind of underneath my um, brow hairs right there, so I have to kind of work on that little guy. All right, now I put on some concealer earlier on my brow bone to make it nice and bright without being shimmery. No shimmer on the brow bone. Promise, promise me. Just a little bit of concealer, then I kind of wipe it off. And this is called carving. You just go up and it kind of helps you clean up or conceal and cover any hairs that have not been plucked. And you can even do this on the top too and it'll give just a slight point of light. You see how subtle that is? There's almost nothing on this brush, but if I run it right along this bone right here, then by contrast, or by, yeah, well, because of the contrast of this being a little bit lighter and this being darker, a point of light shines and it just makes your face look that much brighter. Okay, so put that aside. We're done with the concealer brush and that's all the concealer brush should be used for. Never to apply it under your eyes. Another promise I'm gonna need you to make. Hi, Benet. Hey, Brenda. Oh, Brenda has boxers, y'all. She shows and breeds the most beautiful boxers you've ever had. And she's also a foster adopt parent. Um, and we fell in love once on the most ridiculous spring break excursion ever. Do you remember that, Brenda? Oh my gosh. Remember we were completely lost. We couldn't get into the park. It was Everything was closed. It was a total mess, but we had fun getting to know each other. All right, so now dome blender. Make sure that that's clean by wiping it on my towel. And I'm gonna go right into my crystal color right here. You can only get this color in our Dream On collection. It is not sold individually. And then whatever's left over, I like to put right on my nose, right on my lip. Don't be scared, try it, you'll like it. All right, and I've used every product on the bottom of my little black box. So for those of you just joining in, this is our brand new little black box. I think they're $39 and it has two trays. So this was, this is the bottom one. It is magnetic. It also has a mirror. And then this is the second tray, which is also magnetic, but I have chosen instead of filling it up with all powders, I've chosen to put some lip colors and a mascara and a lip liner in there as well as five eyeshadows. All right, so I'm gonna set that on top. Now, when I'm done, I'll be able to close the lid, set it aside, and my vanity is going to be just as beautiful as it was when I started, without all of these little things everywhere. All right, so, now what do we wanna do? Want some liner? We haven't done liner in a long time. I'm gonna go into number, mm, no, I'm gonna use this brush one more time. Dome blender into number 19, which is a copper color. Benet, this color would look amazing on you. When you get to the outside, push in with your color. Get it into the corner. You wanna just cover the whole lid. For some of you, this may, may mean having to stretch your skin a little bit to get the color all over nice and even. This is packing, we're not sweeping because then we're just basically doing this to the brush and then it just poofs out and flies away. All right, once we get to the outside, we start pushing in, get into that corner, blend a little on the top. And now I'm gonna clean off my brush. I'm rolling it on my towel. And now I'm gonna go into number 37. And I'm gonna roll this in the crease right where the copper stops and my skin begins. So half the brush is on the copper, half is off. And we're just gonna roll it. Use your anatomy for this part to determine where your crease is if it's not obvious to you. All right, 
Oh yeah, you gotta stop sweeping. That's probably one of the biggest mistakes and it's so hard to break those habits. When you're used to doing a certain motion, your brain doesn't even go there. You're already thinking about what you have to do at work that day, the list of stuff you have to do, how you're gonna punish your kid, you know, whatever. So your body is just kind of taking over because you've been doing this for how many years? So if you want to change your makeup game, if you want to get better at this, you have to force yourself to practice when it doesn't matter. All right, let's see if I missed anything else. Hi, Ada, or is it Aida? Oh, do tell me. I hate it when I can't pronounce a name correctly. I need to learn how to put makeup on the right way, and the eyebrows, I need more um, help. Um, I never painted my brows, and I don't know how to do it. You and about, I don't know, three billion other people, um, that is okay. Most pe I mean, who teaches this, right? I mean, if it wasn't for me showing you guys, you'd just be listening to drag queens at the Mac counter. So, I'm here to help. I do have a video, um, but this I'm, I'm glad you're requesting that because I need to do one specifically on brows, and I've been asked to shorten the 12-step brow process. Um, so we'll talk about that soon. Just keep following me and we will get there. But you can always go back. You'll be able to catch these in YouTube and you can just keep replaying and watch. Um, and I'm always happy to FaceTime with you if you want me to watch you do it so I can fix your body mechanics as you're doing it. Happy to do that. Okay. Where was I? I'm going to wipe off my brush. I've got my crease color in. And now I'm going to do number uh, 41, which is that shell color that I love so much. And we're just going to put it on the brow bone. Gorgeous. Um, I just need to say that both of my eyebrows are freaking magical unicorns right now. And I don't have a donkey. It's because I use my left hand. Even though it was awkward and terrifying. Reaping the rewards right now. Reaping. Not weeping. Not weeping anymore. I was so sad. Okay, so now I'm going to use number 11, Don't Cry, It'll Come Back, and when it does, I'll be rich because you're all going to want it. Oh, what? I mean, you'll all be so happy to have it. Aida, tell me how, do the, tell me how to say your name. Is it Ada or Aida? I, I have to know. Hey, Lane Miller, I, I hope it's your wife watching, but if not, I'm happy to have you. I also need Jim to check and make sure there's no women's underwear in your drawer. Just saying. Okay, I'm going to go back into that copper color and I'm going to put it on the bottom here. And remember this brush is going to do all the work for us of making it smudgy and moving it below the lash line. The most important thing that you have to do here is remember to go from the use your anatomy the opening of the eye, not the easiest part to reach, okay? Don't do this part and then cut yourself short of this extra real estate over here and over here, okay? From the slit in your face that holds your eyeball, this entire opening right here has to have color in order to keep maximum focus on your eyeballs so that people can see you and not your makeup. Contrary to popular belief, a good makeup artist wants people to say, you look incredible, not your makeup looks incredible. There are times when, you know, you want to have some fun and it's nice to hear that your makeup looks awesome. But for most of us, just having people affirm that you look good means that your eyes are a restful place for them. Um, and that they can hear what you're saying without distraction. All right, so I think we're kind of done there. Now I am going to go back in and add some liner because we haven't done that in a while. And I'm going to use the Brow Tamer. I put it away too soon. Forgive me. I can't see a darn thing with this bright light in my face. Okay, I'm going to use the first brush that seems appropriate. Oh, look, I got the right one. Okay. It's a very sharp angled brush and I'm going to roll it in number eight, not roll it, sorry, I tap and pull, just one tap and little pull. Um, it's the Lateral Bulbar Conjunctiva, yes, and this is the Zygomatic Arch, bam, I want points for that. 
and maybe a free triple bypass someday when I need it. I'm totally gonna use that lane. Now I know it's really you. You probably do have women's underwear in your... Babe, Lane Miller's watching my video. Jim wants you to try to learn something about your complexion. You're, he says you're a little splotchy. All right, so we're, we're doing this in a couple of segments, all right? Right here, right here, dip back in and do this in little quarter inch segments, okay? Just get the color on there. Then you can clean off your brush and go back and soften the top of the line that you just created. Just kind of roll back and forth with very little pressure. Lateral bulbar conjunctiva. Conjunct conjunctiva? Is there, is, where is the accent? I need to know this. All right, so arms are pressed against me. If you were doing this at home, you might rest your elbow on your um, vanity. And we're gonna start on the outside and go toward the end, toward the middle, sorry, a little bit more. Now we're gonna do the very middle. This is the easy part. Unless you wear glasses, of course, then you're kind of screwed. And then we're gonna do the middle. This is tricky. If you're trying to do this in the bathroom, it's going to be a fail, I promise you. You don't have that kind of skill. Conjunctiva, conjunctiva. I like that, I like me some junk. Okay, so now we got liner on. I'm just gonna take this a step further and show you how to stretch out your eyeball another couple of inches. And for those of us that have a little bit of droopy here, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to mask that. I'm going back to brush number 11 and the same color, number eight. And I'm gonna start here, I'm gonna draw myself, I'm gonna draw a little line to kind of sh show you where exactly it's gonna go. Right here. And it's gonna kinda come down to the inside. All right, we're gonna do it with a lot more finesse than this little thing is allowing by using this brush instead. But you're gonna place it here, work it toward the inside. This will take some practice. And once you get that color laid on there, wipe off your brush and then go back and soften it. And by darkening this little hanging, I'm sure there's probably a name for that too, this little hanging um, flesh right here. Now it's much less obvious. I only really have that on this eye. This one doesn't have it. And I swear it's because a doctor gave me Botox one time. Normally I get it done by a nurse and she's amazing, but then one time an actual plastic surgeon gave it to me and my eyelid drooped and I swear that's why this lid droops forever now. Be careful. Don't trust doctors. <laughs> Lane, sorry. That's really kind of something I believe in. I trust you, maybe. maybe. But the lesson here is only let nurses do your Botox. Doctors have bigger fish to fry. They don't need to be doing Botox. And if they are, you gotta wonder why. Shouldn't you be sucking the fat out of somebody right now? Not jacking with my, anyway. Okay, so I'm gonna draw my little line and we're coming kind of down to the middle here. We wanna, we wanna leave this a little bit lighter, um, but this is, going, this is gonna give you that little eye lift and it's a lot cheaper than plastic surgery. Start at the outside and work in, lay the color on, no sweeping, we're packing. All right, wipe it off and now blend. And the blending for something like this is very gentle. When you're, when you're blending in your crease color, you can roll and you can be a little bit more firm. But when you're doing something like this, you don't wanna wipe off all that beautiful dark 
color that you just put on. You just want to soften the edges. See how this one just kind of disappears gently and this one is like real sharpie. So we're just going along the outside and this is where really good brushes make a huge difference and where really good makeup makes a huge difference. If you've never been able to accomplish this, it's maybe not your fault. It's probably part your fault, but it's also good brushes and good makeup that is blendable. Uh, now I'm just gonna soften that a little bit more. It's always a little trickier to get one to match the other, but don't sit here and judge like this and go back and forth and back and forth and definitely don't judge like this, okay? Just pull back, look at yourself, and if nothing stands out, move on. All right, because that's pretty much what everybody else is gonna do. The one thing that is standing out to me is I have a little bit of powder right here. We're gonna hope that that just sweeps right off. And looks like it did. Okay, so now all of my basics are in place and now I'm gonna go back and do the icing on the cake, okay? Um, on the bottom part of my, maybe should have done this earlier, but I'm glad that I didn't because I like having um, the ability to clean up any um, eyeshadow mess that may have fallen here by applying blush number six right to this bone. You see that shine? This is your occipital bone. Somebody knows anatomy. I'm like a doctor. I'm a face doctor. Okay, so when you're laughing and you're talking and you're interacting with people, light is going to shine off the apex of the curve and light finds light. So when light is bouncing off of other places on your face, it points to your eyes, which are the brightest light coming off of your face. So that's why we highlight. And that's why it's so beneficial. It's not just because the Kardashians do it. It's because there's a reason. There's a science to pretty, a ratio that we reward. Um, and it kind of just is what it is. It may not be fair, but it is what it is. All right, so that's icing layer number one. Icing layer number two, lip liner. This is not about color. This is about a waxy border that's going to basically spackle in all those little this is your vermilion border right here. This little white spot right before your lip becomes your face. You're gonna sketch that in. We have a dark nude and a light nude. I like them both the same. I really honestly don't have a, pre a preference. If you're super pale, you may prefer the light one just so that if you're ever gonna just wear a gloss, it doesn't show up but even our dark nude is not dark enough that it's going to look um, off. All right, then take your finger and just kind of smooth over the wax. And this is going to push the boundaries of your lip just a little bit. Most people stay within the pink and they just, that's their safe place. But if you add the vermilion border to your lip, you're gonna get Oh, it depends on how big your vermilion border is, but anywhere between 15 to 25 percent more lip. Okay, put that back in my little black box, and now eye color. I mean, sorry, eye color, lip color. Let's just go red. I haven't done this in a while, and I'm feeling pretty saucy. Lip brush is always going to give you a better application than this thing. If you must use this, Please wipe it all off and do a very thin dry layer and apl keep applying it until you build up the color. <sighs> Lateral to medial move there. Mm -hmm. Gosh, I so need you to like, I need to do a video and send it to you and have you, have you commentate from like a total nerd perspective. That would be super fun. I'm going to do it. I'm imagining now because you're not going to know what any of these products are so you're just going to be like we're taking the I don't know I can't wait to see what you come up with maxillary bone this is the maxillary not the zy but this is the zygomatic arch right I am right about that yeah okay anyway here we go start on the fat part of your lip 
to gain confidence. Pull a little bit more off the wand. Use the brush in two directions, flat, paddle, colors in, side as a liner. If your arm is pressed up against your body, you can do a much better job controlling this. But it is gonna take practice and you're still gonna make mistakes. I make mistakes all the time. Doing it on yourself is much harder than doing it on somebody else. All right, now the top. The one area where it's really difficult to talk you through it. And I could use a co-host. All right, typically your finger is the best tool to fix any feathering or imperfections that you might have um, just basically by not knowing exactly how to use your brush. Uh, just a slight go over. And I could sit here all day and perfect this, but I don't wanna bore the crap out of y'all. So I'm gonna move on. There we go. That's going back in there. The four colors that I keep with me that I know that I can use to create just about any color are Mia, Sugar Plum, Cherry Pie, and Cupcake. Macaroon could be substituted for Cupcake if you're not a pink person. If you know you're never gonna go very pink. Always after I get lips on, I want a little bit more blush. Now we're gonna put on mascara. This is not limelight mascara because I lost mine. And it sucks. And using it makes me realize how good our mascara really is. But this is how you put on mascara. Well, you should sit back and hold a mirror right here. Relaxed, take a deep breath. I can't do that and show you how. You know what? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. I've never done this before, but we're, we're gonna do it. I'm gonna sit back, I'm gonna bring you with me. Start at the base and wiggle out. Our mascara is a little bit different. You can do the tips first, because it has little fibers in it that will give you a little bit more length, but this one doesn't, so there's no point. And you gotta pay close attention, three sections, outer, inner, well, outer, middle, inner, medial, distal, what's the word for, I don't know, Lane will tell us, I'm sure. Woo, those are some big old lashes, y'all. All right, I'm gonna set you down. But that's what I mean. When your posture is correct, you can do so much better. Oh, I'm not gonna do it. That's bad technique. Sometimes you make an educated decision to do the wrong thing, and that's okay. As long as you're aware of the consequences and willing to accept them. I'm gonna roll that up. Michelle really likes that. I think Michelle makes a lot of educated decisions to do the wrong thing. Oh, and when that happens, what do we do? Somebody tell me. I know there are some veterans here watching. Why? I have no idea. Y'all seriously got to get sick of looking at me talk about these same things over and over again. But until the whole world knows, I'm going to keep doing it. until I make a crap load of money and I don't really care anymore. Just kidding. I'll probably always still care about you. All right, pull a little bit off with your brush. Wipe it off. 
and then just these little bottom guys they just need to be black they don't need to be thick and long and if they are I'm telling you they are a distraction they are nothing to be proud of these little mascara mistakes can be cleaned up very easily but we have to let it dry first it's called lateral when it's closest okay not proximal what's proximal is that front and uh, I'm so confused is it Sunday are you getting your products on Sunday did you get a message who delivers on Sunday okay so now the cleanup is going to happen like this we're gonna go back to that um, concealer brush that we're never going to use for concealer. I'm going to blow on the little bits of mascara that kind of got messed up. Lateral is to the side, medial is to the center. Oh, lateral, medial. Wait, I thought this was distal. I got to get a book. Seriously, will you, um, if I send you a quick video, will you do like just a totally silly commentary but use a bunch of doctor terms it's just gonna pick right off if you use a little bit of concealer if you wipe it while it's wet you're gonna create a disaster always clean toward the nose so we're gonna we're gonna go let's see if I can remember this medially <laughs> did I did I use that term correctly probably not and it just wipes right off whether I use the right term or not, I did just kick a little bit of makeup ass there because literally just wiped right off. So, medial to the nose. Ah, see, I was close. Yay, me. All right. So, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a um, forensic pathologist until I figured out that you have to take math. Um, I loved science. I love dead body. I mean, I don't love dead body. I've never really actually seen a dead body. But I love the idea of cutting them open and seeing what made them die. So I wanted to be a, a forensic pathologist and um, I started reading all of these books um, on anatomy and stuff. So I learned a lot and then I drank myself through college and forgot a lot. So um, there's that. Anyway, buy your little black box, okay? Lane, buy your wife one. Actually, just send me your credit card number and I'll just send her everything I think she needs. Um, $39 they are available they will sell out very quickly we had they just launched yesterday or Monday Monday late afternoon and every beauty guide which is 10,000 of us um, has purchased several of them so um, I won this one I didn't have to buy one um, because you guys are so amazing so go ahead and get one of those especially if you have one light products but even if you don't there's nothing that's going to make you want to fill this baby up like having it in your little hot hands. All right, let's finish some setting spray. And I'm going to go study an anatomy book. Ciao!